Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take you through the steps of completing this assignment of finding a Leontief multiplier and then figuring out how to use it. So um, <clears throat> your instructions are shown here. You've got an input-output input table, um, table one that's shown here, um, that lists several sectors of an economy and dollar values for how much the goods from each sector are used as production inputs um, and production outputs in the economy. So this is tab similar to a table um, from your textbook. The multiplier matrix, table two below, we scroll down, notice it is blank, that will be your job, um, will tell how much each sector has to produce in order to satisfy its own final demand as well as demand for its goods and intermediate inputs for production processes. Um, so the entries in this multiplier matrix are the outputs um, each row sector must produce in order to satisfy a $1 increase in the column's final demand. Similar um, to part A of the table 3.2 in your text. So um, chapter 3's appendix walks you through how this works, how to transform table 1 into table 2. And then reading in the text in chapter 2, we'll talk to you more about how to use this table once you've done it. So let's uh, flip over and look at the book for a second. Okay, so here's um, table 3.1 in your book, right? Um, and this is in the middle of a discussion in the chapter where we're talking about um, how certain sectors are intertwined within an economy, right? So the fact that you need more agricultural products is going to mean you're going to need more industrial products if you're using industrial products in order to create, um, to, to cultivate um, those agricultural products, right? And so different sectors are connected to each other um, and we can, we can describe that connection using the dollar values here. So um, <clears throat> the matrix, uh, actually the matrix shown here, the next one, the actual Leontief multiplier matrix, um, gives you the amount that production has to increase in the row sector in order to increase final demand in the column sector by one dollar. So, um, for example, if we all of a sudden um, have an increase in demand for agricultural goods, right? So an increase in demand for our column agriculture um, by one dollar. The question is, okay, then how much do we need to increase our production in, say, industry or services, whichever you want to look at, um, in order to satisfy that final demand, that increase in demand for, from agriculture, right? So if we have an increase in demand from agriculture, then we're going to need to, um, of $1, right, then we're going to need to increase um industrial production by 58 cents is what this table tells us. Um, we'll need to increase services by 18 cents for each dollar that we need additionally um, in agricultural output. So that's sort of how you read this table, how um, this table helps us to sort of analyze what's going on in an economy. So um, this lab really takes you through how to construct the table and then asks you to do a little bit of that analysis at the end. Um, so first, let, let's think about how to construct the table. So we're going to go from table 3.1, which shows inputs and outputs, um, to the next table, which shows the actual, the multipliers. So <clears throat> I'm going to the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this down, which is what I've done in your homework um, as well, where we take the factors and the, the imports and we just sort of shrink them down. Um, and then we're, we're going to kind of almost ignore them um, as we move forward in, in this exercise. So um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Excel and I'm going to copy these numbers, copy this part of the table into Excel. So keep in mind I'm working with the the um, the table that's in your book. You actually have different numbers to work with over on your homework. So the numbers here are not the same as the ones in the book. So you'll want to work through this yourself using the numbers that you're given. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Excel and I'm going to, I've already copied in here those numbers um, out of the table in the book. So the production sectors um, across the top and across the side here and the numbers from the book. And again, I've left out those, those factors um, and imports that are on the last line. But when you put the total line down here, and this is going to become important, you want to be sure that you keep the totals the same. Um, you do want to include those factors and imports in your totals. So be sure you copy those numbers from your table, um, not just do uh, like a sum or something in, in Excel, because you do want your totals to include the factors and imports, even though you're um, sort of making them go away just to make, it, make things look simpler. So that's the first step. I've got my table here. Now, I'm going to look over in the appendix of the book. So let's flip back to the book right quick. Um, here we go. I'll make this a little smaller so we can see both at the same time. So the appendix tells me um, that in order to go from the table that I have, the input-output table that I have, to the Leonti multiplier matrix that I want, I need to follow three steps. So the first step is convert the input-output matrix into a matrix of coefficients for the three production activities by dividing each element in the original production matrix by its corresponding column total. So that's what we'll do here. I'm going to create a new, I'm just going to copy this and paste it right up under. We're going to do this in several, um, so paste, we'll do this in several steps. The first step is we're going from our input output matrix to the Leontief coefficient matrix. This is not the multiplier matrix that we're going to, it's just the next step. So put a bookmark here so I can use my hands. <laughs> um, this is the Leontief coefficient matrix, which is our first step. So I'm going to delete the numbers out of here, which are just the ones I copied, and we're going to put new numbers here. The new numbers we're going to put here are, from our instructions over here, we're going to take the original number that was in our first table and divide it by the column total. Okay, so here I'm going to tell Excel I want this to equal this one divided by the column total. Right, so the original number divided by the column total is what I want in this, this cell here in my new matrix. And I want to do that for each one. So this one I want to be this guy divided by the column total. And then this one, I want to be this guy divided by the column total. All right? And I want to do that exact same thing um, for the other columns, for all the cells through here. So equals this divided by the column total equals this divided by the column total and equals this divided by the column total. And my last row, my last column here, this divided by the column total, this divided by my column total. Remember, you have to push the equal sign each time in order to put your um, equation in here into Excel. Now, now I have completed the first step from the textbook. I've converted the Leontief input output matrix into the matrix of coefficients. 
So this is step one. I have my matrix of coefficients. Step two. Now, subtract this matrix, the A matrix, the one we just created, from the identity matrix, which has all zeros except for ones along its diagonal. So, again, I'm going to copy this thing just so I have my shell. Here's my next step. I'm going to delete the numbers so we can add our new numbers in here. My next step is I want to take this and I want to subtract the identity matrix. Now the identity matrix looks like this. I'm just going to stick it out here on the side for you so you can see. 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1. Okay? So it's a, a, a matrix, a table, where we have 1's along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So what that means is I want, to, I want my diagonal entries here to be 1 minus what was up, up above, right? So 1, I need to put my equal sign, excuse me, 1 minus this one. And my other next diagonal, 1 minus this one. Oh, I forgot my equal sign again. Okay. Equals 1 minus this one, right? So I'm just doing this, the 1's on the diagonal, minus the numbers I had in my previous matrix. So equals 1 minus, uh, put my put in the wrong spot, put it over here, equals 1 minus this one. And now all the other ones I'm going to fill in with 0 minus what was up above. So here equals 0 minus this one, equals 0 minus this one, be sure you get all your cells matched up, so equals 0 minus, I want to be sure that if I'm in the agriculture industry, I'm, I'm going back up to agriculture industry, right, to click in the right cell up there. Down here I want equals 0 minus this one. Here I want equals 0 minus this one. And lastly, I want equals 0 minus this one. Done. So that's my second step. This is the, the identity matrix, which is this. It's just a table with ones on the diagonals and zeros everywhere else, minus the matrix I made in step one. All right, so we've got, um, we're taking this one, minus, or this one, the identity matrix, minus where, what we had in the step above. And we should have a table that looks like this one. Yes. So I'm just tracking right along the steps that they're giving us in the appendix of this chapter, which is where I told you to go look um, for the instructions on how to do this, right? Um, finally, we have one more step. Now, the Leontief ma uh, multiplier matrix is the inverse of this one. Now, this is, it's getting heavily mathy, right? Using words like inverse and stuff are, um, are, sounds ridiculous. <laughs> um, but just take this as a, as a, don't worry about the math. Don't worry about the, the uh, terminology. Just take this as an exercise in following instructions, right? So we have a matrix or a table. Matrix is just a fancy mathy word for a table, right? We have a three by three table. And we want to get the inverse of it. Now, I also shared with you instructions for doing this. So I'll pull this over here. Here are our instructions for finding the inverse of a matrix in Excel. Right? This is the one we want the inverse of. Right? Our last step. Um, so find the inverse of matrix A by highlighting the cells where you want to place the resulting matrix. So I, where do I want my answer? Let's just pick a spot, right? It needs to be three by three. Um, so pick a spot, highlight it. Once you have highlighted the resulting matrix, while it is still highlighted, enter the following formula. So while it is still highlighted in Excel, you want to type 
equals M-I-N-V-E-R-S-E. -E. You want to open parentheses and you want to be sure that you put the range. So they, in the instructions, they have B2 through D4 because that's where their matrix A is, right? B2 through D4. For us, this for me at least, this matrix is in B15 is the top left corner of it and D17 is the bottom right corner of it. So I want to be sure um, one way to do this is just to drag click on the top left corner and drag your mouse down while you're holding down the mouse button drag it down to the bottom right hand corner and it will put that into there. So B15 through D17. So make sure you have the right address in there for the matrix that you're trying to get the inverse of, right? So when the formula is entered, now make sure I haven't pushed anything else. I've typed M inverse and I've put in the address, the B15 to, to D17, right? And I can close the parentheses. Now, when the formula is entered, you don't just hit enter like you usually would in Excel to make your make it work. Because you need a you need Excel to recognize that this is a matrix, not a single cell. The way to do that is press Control shift and enter all at the same time on your keyboard. If you don't press them simultaneously then you'll get an error message you won't get the right answer. All right? So what it gives me there when I do that when I press control shift and enter all at the same time is and again this is on a PC on a Mac you have a little bit different buttons um, but you can find those uh, if you if you Google this. Google how to find how to get a matrix inverse in Excel on a Mac, and you'll find um, the answer. The the three buttons, every the, everything will be the same except those three buttons. You won't necessarily have the Control um, Shift Enter buttons. So, but on a PC, this is how you do this: Control Shift Enter, um, and now you have your matrix. This is your answer. So you can put your labels in here across the bottom and the top boom this is your answer this is your Leontief multiplier matrix done you found your matrix the last step in the homework is to interpret it and that's where we started this video was talking about what this matrix tells us right so the question um, that you're asked on your homework is uh, down at the bottom how much additional output should the agricultural sector would the agricultural sector need to produce if the service sector saw an increase in final demand of 300 so remember the matrix pull the matrix back up over here the matrix that we just found gives us the amount that production must increase in a row if final demand for the column increases by one dollar. So we're told final demand in the service sector has increased. So final demand in the column increases. So the final demand in the service sector has increased by three hundred dollars. How much does our output in agriculture then need to change? So we're going to look at the services column and look at the agriculture row. Remember, this tells us how much agriculture would need to increase if services increased by $1. But I'm told the homework question asks, what if it increases by $300? So your answer is just multiply. This would be if it was $1, so if it was $300, it's this times 300 so your answer in this case remember your numbers are different so your multiplier matrix will look different from mine but it would be I'm gonna just get Excel to do the calculation for me you could do it on a calculator equals 300 times this number and that would be my answer if these were the numbers I started with so remember on your homework you need to start with the numbers you're given in your homework um, not with the numbers from the textbook with, that I started with but um, this is the process you'll follow um, to go from a simple input-output matrix in the beginning 
You'll do a three-step process as described in the appendix of this chapter, and you will end up with a Leontief multiplier matrix. And really the most important part of this is to me is that you understand how to use it. So that very last part um, where you use your, your new matrix uh, to describe what's going on in the economy, that, that's really the important part. The rest of it's just an exercise in how to follow instructions. I hope this video helps.